Set against the backdrop of Berlin, Germany, a young MMA fighter named Okta is warming up as his big match is set to begin in just an hour. Okta doesn't fight under any agency. Instead, he and his friends got into this business through collaboration. His manager is one of Okta's friends named Paul. Actually, this match has been postponed several times by the organizers. The problem is, when it was rescheduled, Okta's fight coincided with his daughter's birthday. Since Okta is divorced and his daughter was born when he was just 19 years old. During his warm-up time, he even tries to call his daughter named Leonie, promising to attend her birthday party and bring the cake and gifts she wants. From there, accompanied by Paul and his fighting buddy named Cosima, they head to the match venue. Along the way, Okta is preoccupied with something, as he realizes that since he has to be at his daughter's birthday party soon, it means he has to win without getting any bruises on his face. Long story short, they arrived at the venue. In the middle of entering the locker room, Okta and his friends were intercepted by a gang leader named Shino. Chino hopes Okta will emerge as the winner in this fight, as he has placed a bet on Okta's victory. Anyway, while in the locker room, Okta suddenly receives a call from his ex named Mina, and he gets furious, feeling that Okta has heartlessly lied to his own daughter by saying he would bring the cake and gift. Moreover, the birthday party will start in an hour from now. She warns Okta to come on time, and doesn't care about any excuses if he's late. After the call, Okta is filled with anger, but anyhow, he has to get ready to enter the ring. And just moments before the event begins, the ex's husband contacts Okta and says that Maina is currently seeking custody of their daughter. Coincidentally, her husband is a lawyer. Okta has been deemed unfit to care for their child all this time. For example, now, on his daughter's birthday, Okta is off to fight. That's why if Okta doesn't want that to happen, he has to be at his daughter's birthday party, which will start in an hour. Without hesitation, Okta heads to the locker room to change clothes. Then, he leaves immediately. Paul tries to stop him, but Okta's mind is in turmoil. All he can think about is how to get his daughter back. As Okta exits the building, Chino and his gang are also puzzled why Okta suddenly flees and immediately give chase. The problem is, the location of the birthday party is quite far away, so he has to hurry. Okta then continues his journey using Uber. Along the way, Paul calls and says they will be disqualified if he doesn't show up within the specified time. He hopes Okta will return to the venue soon, while he tries to stall the organizers. But no matter how much he's persuaded, Okta doesn't care because his daughter's custody is above everything else. In the middle of the road, the car he's in gets stuck in traffic due to a street market. Several of Chino's members manage to catch up, and Okta decides to get out of the car. He tries to escape by rushing through some nearby shops, but in the end, he gets cornered. It's quite odd seeing Chino, a gangster, insisting so much for Okta to return to the arena, even though he's not the event organizer. Exhausted from being chased, Okta decides to fight back. Here, the thugs try to get Okta into the car without hurting him. But they struggle because Okta is no ordinary fighter. Eventually, they manage to make Okta faint by locking his neck. Once unconscious, he is quickly carried into the car, but on the way he revives and rebels again. It turns out he was pretending to be unconscious from the start to reduce the number of enemies he had to face simultaneously. And as soon as he gets out of the car, he mercilessly beats Chino's henchman again. Here, because he's tired of dealing with Okta, Chino then orders his men to call for backup from a more brutal squad. At the same time, Okta receives a call from both of his parents, asking where their grandson is at the moment. They have no idea that their son is currently in big trouble. Shortly after, Paul also calls back to inform Okta about something important. It turns out that all this time, Chino has been rigging Okta's match since long before. That's why he dared to bet a huge amount of money. Now, with Okta about to be declared the loser, his money will automatically disappear. It's no wonder the gangsters are so insistent on getting Okta back to the arena. The other members that Chino sent soon arrive at the location, and Okta's escape continues.
Since the location is now not far from the training place, he considers hiding there and asking for help from his friends to fight against Shino's henchmen. And once again, the fierce battle between the gang members and the MMA fighters continues. Even though Octa's two friends are women, they are very skilled in combat. In the midst of the fight, Octa plans to escape through the window. However, Kosima tries to ask what actually happened, as if Octa is running out of time and wants to leave just like that. Octa then explains that he is threatened with losing his daughter. Therefore, he needs additional help. On the other hand, not only does he have to attend the birthday party, Octa also has to stop by to pick up the cake and gift that he ordered. Kosima then agrees to help him on the condition that she gets a raise next month. After Okta successfully escapes, shortly after, the gangsters pull out their weapons and make Cosima and her friends reluctant to resist anymore. Not long after, several of Chino's members reappear and chase him. Seeing the police car patrolling around, Okta decides to ask for help. But because he's ignored by the police, he even utters some harsh words, and he ends up getting detained instead. But at least, now he's safer than running away from the gangsters. There are 45 minutes left before his daughter's birthday party starts. He just hopes he'll be taken to the police station not far from the intended location. But as he's in the middle of the road, suddenly... Turns out it was Chino's brother named Winkler. He tries to capture Okta again, this time threatening him with a firearm. But luckily... Okta quickly turns the tables. From there, he makes his escape. But instead of heading straight to the birthday party venue, he goes to the bakery where he ordered the cake. Originally, Hosima was supposed to pick it up, but since she didn't have any money, Okta had to go there himself. The cake he ordered is specially decorated with a cat, just like his daughter's favorite. But just as he was about to leave, Winkler reappears. Okta pleads to be allowed to pass. But instead, the gangsters act indecently, even knocking over his daughter's birthday cake. As a result, this time, Okta goes berserk. If earlier he fought just to defend himself, now Okta unleashes all his abilities to finish off Winkler. He doesn't stop throwing punches until Winkler is unconscious. Okta's hands are covered in blood. If Kusima hadn't stopped him, Winkler might have been killed. But the problem resurfaces. The MMA fighter who was supposed to be Okta's opponent, along with some thugs, also appear at the location and join in chasing Okta. Luckily, in the midst of the escape, an acquaintance of Okta, let's call him Beard Guy, arrives on a motorcycle and offers a ride. Thankfully, they manage to escape from the pursuers. Okta then asks to be dropped off at the subway station, but Beard Guy suddenly takes him to an empty building instead. Turns out, he's an accomplice of one of the most dangerous Russian mafias. Beard Guy is tasked to bring Okta in for interrogation. The mafia leader named Denisa suspects that Okta has been collaborating with other gang members. He believes Okta intentionally withdrew from the fight to lose the bet. By the way, Denisa is furious because he entrusted 500,000 euros to Chino. The money was supposed to be multiplied through bets, but now it's gone. Okta explains that he escaped to regain custody of his beloved daughter. At first, Denisa doesn't believe him, to the point where Okta almost spills the beans about his daughter's full name. Of course, revealing his daughter's full name would be like signing his own death warrant, as she could become a target in the future. Seeing Okta's determination, Denisa believes the reason he's given. She orders Chano to come to the location immediately for execution. When the Mafia members guarding him let their guard down, Hakta makes a run for it from the location. Even though his hands are still tied to the chair, he manages to run fast. Luckily, the subway station is right in front of the building where he was held captive. Once inside the train, he asks a little kid to help him untie his hands. The news about the police car being hit earlier becomes quite viral. Someone also secretly recorded Okta's fight and uploaded it to social media. But Okta doesn't care. What matters is he's getting more frustrated because now the promise he made to his daughter is shattered. During the journey, Okta tries to contact his daughter. However, she perceives her father as someone who breaks promises. Due to exhaustion, Okta falls asleep for the remainder of the journey. When he wakes up, he realizes he's not far from the location. However, the MMA fighter, 
who is still a member of Chino's group, along with his henchmen, reappears and chases Okta. He tries to escape again until he ends up in a nightclub. There, cornered and with no other choice, Okta has to fight back. During the scuffle, Okta gets cut by a sharp object his enemy wields. As a result, he sustains a wound on his abdomen and starts bleeding. But there's no time to complain because the real fight is just about to begin. Of course, this opponent is different from the gangsters. They're both MNA athletes. At first, Okta struggles to win the fight, especially considering the severity of his abdominal wound. But eventually, he manages to launch an unexpected attack. As he exits the building, he notices Paul searching for him. It turns out that all along, Paul has been tracking Okta's GPS signal from the watch he wears. At this point, Okta realizes why he has always been easily found by Chino's men. It's because, from the beginning, it was Paul who informed them. Paul admits to his actions, but he claims he did it to get Okta back into fighting. He never expected Chino to want to kill him. And because he leaked Okta's location from the start, when Paul refused to provide the latest update, he was also threatened with death. Paul tries to persuade Okta to cooperate with Chino, suggesting they could earn more money together. Because all this time, Chino has been known to double his money through rigged matches. Okta is utterly disgusted by Paul's words. He never imagined being betrayed by his own friend. With 20 minutes left before the birthday party starts, Okta decides to make a quick stop at his parents' house. He needs to tend to his wounds and rest for a moment. However, not long after lying down, Paul calls again. He apologizes for all his actions, including not telling Okta from the beginning that he had been working with Chano to rig the match outcomes. But he explains that he did it because their business's economic situation was in shambles. Even coasting the salary hadn't been paid for several months. However, there's another purpose for the recent call. Paul is currently at gunpoint by Chino. He's forced to find out Okta's current whereabouts. Yet Okta chooses to remain silent. Actually, at this point, Pakta is ready to give up on getting his daughter back. After all, he feels he's failed as a father. But Okta's father tells him not to make the same mistakes he did. To earn a child's love, one must struggle, even if it means dying. Hearing this, Okta, who was already desperate, now continues his journey. He also suddenly has an idea to end all this chaos. Okta then calls Paul to inform him that he'll soon arrive at an animal shelter. This means Chino will also be heading there shortly. Okta deliberately tells him this because after that, he calls Beard Guy and informs him that he knows where Chino is. Coincidentally, Denisa or the Russian Mafia are still looking for Chino's whereabouts. They intend to kill him for causing them to lose 500,000 euros. But just gathering gangsters and the Mafia in the same place isn't enough. Okta also plans to call police to come to the animal shelter. Long story short, when Okta arrives there, it turns out the animal shelter is closed. He asks the staff to open the door, but they refuse outright. Okta decides to break in. There, he immediately adopts a cat as a birthday present for his daughter. But as he's about to leave, Chino is already at the door. He's dragged in and seated next to Paul. Chino says he's suffered huge losses because of both of them. So in the future, Okta and Paul must be willing to work until all their debts are paid off. Amidst the conversation, suddenly the Russian mafia arrives at the scene. Gunfire erupts. A few seconds later, the police arrived. The situation is chaotic, and Chino is convinced Okta has set him up from the beginning. Without hesitation, he fires a shot, injuring Paul's thigh. Okta was also about to be killed, but luckily, Kosima arrives to provide assistance. They both manage to land a flurry of punches on Shino. However, with a crowbar in hand, he still manages to severely injure Kosima. Okta momentarily almost knocks Shino unconscious. But again, he receives a counterattack, hitting his torn wound in the abdomen. As Kosima rises again, she tries to launch several attacks. A fierce battle unfolds, but Shino refuses to give up, until finally, Kosima is hit and falls from a height. With full rage, Okta continues to launch various attacks, aiming to knock Chino unconscious. <laughs> However, somehow, he still manages to stand. Shortly after, Kosima reappears and tries to shield Okta from counterattacks, but they both run out of energy. 
Eventually, the fight stops when Paul fires a shot, causing their enemies to flee in fear. Outside the building, gangsters and Russian Mafia members are seen being apprehended by the police. Okta and his friends must leave the scene immediately, or they risk being arrested too. But before parting ways, Okta forgives all of Paul's mistakes, on the condition that he raises Kostuma's salary next month. Without realizing it, the time shows 6.4 p.m., meaning Okta is late for his daughter's birthday party. But to him, it doesn't matter. At the very least, he wants his daughter to receive the promised gift. Staggering, Okta continues his journey. However, along the way, Chino reappears but ends up falling in front of Okta. Before meeting his daughter, Okta takes a moment to wash his face. Dust and blood from the fight have covered his body since earlier. Once done, he continues his journey on foot for several kilometers. It's important to note that Okta's wound in the abdomen is quite severe, not to mention the bruises from various fights. Eventually, when the destination house is in sight, he collapses. He can no longer continue walking. But fortunately, not long after, his daughter comes out of the house and gives him a warm welcome. She seems overjoyed with her father's presence. She doesn't even care about the promised cake or gift anymore. His daughter also wonders why her father is covered in injuries, but Octa just responds with a smile. Dads might not always be at home, but it's because they're making sure each of their children has a decent life. And with that, the movie ends. So, what are your thoughts on this movie? Want to watch similar movie recaps? Please drop all your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss updates from our channel. That's it for now, and see you in the next videos.